Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fée de la Mer, Handmade Soaps in the Magdalen Islands, Quebec, Canada. I am so excited to be doing this video today. I'm actually not making soap. Since the release of my first solid shampoo video, you can find it up there, <laughs> last year, just a little, um, it'll be a year in a couple weeks. So since the release of that first solid shampoo video, I have been formulating how to make solid conditioner. So I've been literally like testing dozens of variations of solid conditioners for the past year, using them on myself first, on my boyfriend, on my other family members, and my friends and colleagues. And let me show you a couple that I've been doing and working on. Here they are, and they're beautiful. And these have been made in various molds just because it's so much fun to have a neat shape. So basically, um, a solid conditioner is composed of similar ingredients to a liquid conditioner, but without the water content. If you look on your liquid conditioner bottle, the first ingredient will either be water or some type of liquid. Um, so by making them solid, you don't need a bottle. It's eco-friendly, it's travel-friendly, and they're so practical and fun to use. I just I would never go back now that I've discovered the solid conditioner. Now, I would like to give a huge, huge shout out to my friend, Marie Rema. Um, she has the blog, Humble Me and Me, and she also has a great YouTube channel under the same name. So please, follow the link right up there if you wanna know who Marie is, if you don't know her already. And she has some great solid conditioner recipes and tutorial that are free. So please go over and watch them if you want a formula as she has some available for you. Now, I read both of her recipes, maybe she has more, but um, from that base and start point, I started to formulate my own. Various ingredients may be found in solid conditioners. There are just many, many ways to formulate them. Um, my base ingredient is the BTMS 50, which is an emulsifying wax and conditioning agent. It gives a nice slip and very, very silky feel, uh, feeling on the hair. It somehow resists wash off, so that's why it has this really nice feeling on your hair. I also like to use um, oils and solid exotic butter. I have some cocoa butter from Paris Fragrance USA, and my amounts are already pre-measured in here, and this is combined with cocoa butter. I will also be using the daikon seed extract from Miss Doyle's Soapery because this is a natural alternative to the silicones that are usually uh, commonly seen in hair conditioner. And since I have access to daikon seed extract, why not use it? I'm gonna be showing you two different formulas today, but this is what goes into the first one. And then I have uh, extracts, I have a fragrance oil called coconut and it's an all-natural fragrance oil from Essential Wholesale and I absolutely love it. It's just gorgeous and beautiful and smells awesome. Now the other ingredients that we're going to combine uh, to make this particular formula are acetyl alcohol, acetyl alcohol and DL panthenol. I get my uh, DL panthenol at Windy Point Soap here in Canada. And my cethyl alcohol and my cetyaryl alcohol, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but here, here's the cetyaryl alcohol. And this one is from Lotion Crafter in the US. And here's my cethyl alcohol. And both of these are thickening agents. They are kind of waxy-like products. They are derived from either coconut or palm, but I'd like to give a shout out to Lotion Crafters because they actually carry the, these ingredients from RSPO suppliers, which means that they, it is the round table for sustainable palm oil. I'm going to go ahead and add my cethyl alcohol and cethyaryl alcohol to the BTMS 50. The cethyl alcohol actually acts as a thickening and hardening agent, and it gives a really nice texture to your hair. I have this whisk, and you may have noticed my big metal spoon. Both of these are from Lotion Crafters, and I love them. Um, this one mainly because it's all stainless steel, so I can use it to whip up my, um, in my hot ingredients, and I don't have to worry about anything melting down in my formula. This is my kokum and my 
cocoa butter. Now that all of my solid waxes, emulsifiers, and exotic butters are combined, I'm going to apply a low heat to this mix, and I'm gonna monitor the temperature as it melts, as I don't want to scorch any of these good, yummy ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my Panthenol. So this is basically pro-vitamin B5, and it's absolutely good for your hair. This one is in a powder form. So what I do, I like to wet it with my extracts prior to adding to the rest of the solid conditioner formula. I'm using some hydrolyzed rice protein. This comes from a Windy Point soap. I'm just gonna wet my panthenol with it. Once this is done, I will add the rest of my liquid oils, and in this case, this is simply the daikon seed extract from Miss Doyle Sudbury. Sometimes I do have a combination of two liquid oils. This one is just one. And my natural coconut fragrance oil from Essential Wholesale. And I'm not using a lot. I need one more gram. I am getting batch two ready and adding this beautiful, luxurious, exotic cocoa butter to my base solid ingredients. It's also combined with Tukuma butter unrefined. Both of these exotic butters are from Paris Fragrances USA and they were shipped to me as samples to test and review for free. This solid conditioner will contain broccoli seed oil, which is also a natural replacement for silicones in hair care, um, as it helps to form a kind of a film or a barrier and uh, add some slip to your hair. And I think I said this wrong before, but this is acai or acai berry oil, unrefined, and it is also from Paris Fragrance USA. Now, the broccoli seed oil is a little yellowish in color, and if you smell it up close, it smells like cooked broccoli. So I'm keeping it very low, but it has some very beneficial properties to the hair. As I said, it is a natural silicone uh, replacement, so yay. There we go. The acai berry oil, which is absolutely lovely. But look how rich that color is. It's really, really, really green. Very green. Even though we don't use it as a colorant, you have to expect that this product will not be uh, totally white if you're using the broccoli and the acai berry oil. So you have to kind of work with this into your formulas. And we will be ready to mix the first conditioner up with its own additives. And I have a little bit of uh, lime essential oil in here that I'm using in tiny amounts. It was already pre-mixed. It's great for hair, but you have to keep it low because it is a limited usage rate. Essential oil. This is now when the whisk becomes handy. Because the BTMS 50 is an emulsifier, it will emulsify all of the ingredients from this formula together. And then I'm gonna pour in these different molds. This one is a silicone mold that I got from Candle Science. I got, I got it in um, Dallas actually just last week and as they were at the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetics Guild conference and I thought it was the perfect size for solid conditioners. Uh, these are actually my favorite molds so far. And this one is a cannelé uh, mold, like a pastry mold, but I, do, I use them uh, strictly for cosmetics. And this one is the perfect travel size. Um, it's a leaf shape, but it's perfect for traveling. So these two are from Amazon, and this one I found at Candle Science. And start pouring.
I am using some spearmint and lavender essential oils from Plants Power to add a lovely fragrance to this conditioner and they are actually also good for your hair. That's it. That's how you make a solid conditioner. There are many other ways to make them, but this is how I make them. And now I'm going to pop these in the fridge for about an hour and let them completely cool down until tomorrow to unmold them. Um, if you would like to formulate, make and sell your own solid conditioner, please um, be advised that there is a patent on solid conditioner. Yup. So it is owned by Lush and it is valid in the US for until 2026 ish in 2024 23 in Canada it doesn't prevent you from making and selling solid conditioner but it means that you're gonna have to look into that patent and make sure that you're not working within the patent so that you are not infringing on it and um, because that could potentially result into um, not a fun experience. Uh, if you're not sure that you understand the patent, make sure to get some professional advice and counseling. There are IP attorneys out there that can help you, that you can hire uh, to look over the patent and then make them look at your formula <laughs> so that you know that you are safe and that you're doing the right thing. All right, so I'll be back soon to unmold these beautiful mm, conditioner. The solid conditioners have set in the fridge for an hour and then they've been on my work table for another four or five hours. They are completely firm, but I want to do a little uh, finish touch up before I unmold tomorrow. You can see that up close that it kind of wrinkles a little bit. So I'm going to take a heat gun and this heat gun is only used in this workshop for cosmetics. So we just basically heat, remelt and smooth out the tops. The solid conditioners have hardened overnight and are now ready to unmold. So here's what I do. I just take a fresh new piece of parchment paper and I place it on my tray and then you just flip the mold over and they pop right out. Voila, you got some beautiful solid conditioner bars and they will need to dry for a couple days and then they'll be ready to label and sell. I really like this shape. It's absolutely perfect. It holds in the hand like it's the best one. Um, the one with the leaf, like this, I also like for travel size. Uh, that's the one I took to the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetics Guild annual conference. It just fits right into that portable soap dish that you may have. And then there's also space for a little solid shampoo on the side and a little guest size soap. So I really like these. Uh, as travel size and they do last a very long time and now here's the cannelé I really like this shape it's really easy to grip on and to rub on your hair and these are also very flexible silicone molds so they work great here you go pop them out look how beautiful these turned out they're all nice and shiny um, I did forget to say in the beginning of the video when I was showing all of the ingredients, uh, I know I'm going to get questions about this, so the BTMS 50 is actually a conditioning agent that is made from colza or rapeseed oil, also known as canola, and it gives a really nice feeling on your hair. And to use one of these solid conditioners, so basically what you do after taking a shower and washing your hair with solid shampoo, I hope, then you just take a puck or a piece of uh, your solid conditioner and you just glide it on your wet hair or you can just like kind of like wet your hands and rub it it'll create some sort of a lotion feel in your hand and you just can apply it on your hair if you have short hair 
just rubbing it between your hands and putting on your hair is gonna work great. If you have a longer hair like me, you may wanna start this way and just then finishing by gliding down through your hair and then just work it in with the shower and the water coming in, rinse it off just as another conditioner and you're good to go. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the making of these solid conditioners and let me know if you try your own, like tag me online so I can see your creations and don't forget to visit Humbly and Me, the blog. I will list all the links down in the description box so you can learn how to make a basic solid conditioner and then you can experiment and make your own with different oils, butters, additives and so on. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys soon in another video.